Dan Avenaria served as choir director during this time. On February 1, 1980, St. Matthew lost its longtime volunteer and mother hen to countless youth. Nelavine Allman died at age 58. I, I don't know just how to describe her other than to say that she was a hard shell with a soft heart. That sometimes is important. Um, I think the discipline in our Sunday school was good because she was willing to be a disciplinarian. Nella Green always said, this year I will double your wages. And she really didn't give us that either. Sometimes you realize as you grow up that some of the people that were the most disciplined to you are the people that did you the most good. 1982 would be the final year for Pastor Auden, who departed St. Matthew after many years. Looking back at my ministry at St. Matthew, I look back with um, both uh, satisfaction on many things that I'm sure we can look back on and being satisfied that we did what we could. And of course, a certain amount of disappointment because we always feel that we could have done more. We could have done better. Uh, we could have done uh, things perhaps differently in a way that would have been even more effective. But I think we have to leave that kind of thing uh, to God. Wartburg student Fritz Lampe served St. Matthew as interim pastor. One of the things that, 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 that made St. Matthew so important for both myself and Diane is the very thing that brought us to Dubuque, Iowa. Uh, I'm a product of the Pacific Northwest, a suburban congregation, and really didn't have a history in a congregation that had multiple generations that went back 50, 60, 70 years. And so coming to Warburg Seminary, part of it was, let's see what Midwestern Lutherans are about and see what the, the church is about outside of the coast. And then to uh, and then to begin to work at St. Matthew and to find a community of people where you had maybe three, sometimes four generations of people um, uh, active in all kinds of ways in the congregation was, was, was important. Did the youth ministry, worked with the uh, confirmation, got a chance to teach that, and we did a clown workshop, I think, too, where we had some of the youth uh, painted up and uh, we led a communion service. Uh, St. Matthew was very supportive, and as we prepared to go to Papua New Guinea, uh, people donated money to help with the cost. That experience that St. Matthew helped support, getting me into global mission or getting Diane and I overseas, clearly changed our lives. The St. Matthew congregation includes several direct descendants from Martin Luther, such as the Avenaria family. He felt so strong in what he believed in that he was willing to stand up for what he said, even though the risk of his personal consequences or life or the love of his church, whatever, could have suffered from that. And so I guess, I, I guess that's probably one of the things that that I took from him the most, and, and, and I think I probably already had that that character of standing up for what you believe instilled in me to begin with, but probably after having read that as a late teenager, early 20s, probably even impressed upon me more that it is important for you to stand up for what you believe. Um, the opinion that you have may not always be the most popular opinion, but it may be the right opinion. And if you don't stick up for it, who else is going to stick up for it? And so. I think probably knowing that that's a trait that I have from a 14th generation great-grandfather is pretty pretty humbling. His dad, Jake Cockberger, touched us on the back when we were sitting in a pew. He said, okay guys, it's about time you get out of that pew and get out here and start doing what we're doing because we're getting pretty old to do this. And, and we did. Don and I got out and we were there until Don passed away, and I'm still here yet. I guess I'll die here too, like the rest of us. <laughs> so, but it means a lot to me. That's why I call this my church. The links to the very earliest days of the church were beginning to fade. As St. Matthew began to lose its longtime members, the church also looked to its future. Student assistant David Dowgs brought his leadership to the Luther League, taking the young people to the youth gathering in San Antonio. And in 1983, Pastor Gerald Melby was called to St. Matthew.